Hello everybody, I'm Jeff Phillips and welcome to this week's webisode. Every week I bring in a new business to help share tips and advice about their industry. And today I got a special guest. I have Billy. Billy, welcome to the show. Glad to be here, Jeff. Thanks for having sure. me. Sure. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do? Um, my name is Billy Mason and the name of my organic uh, heirloom tomato business is DeepChathamGardens.com. I live here in Chatham County, North Carolina, and I've been growing tomatoes for 45 years. I specifically prefer to grow heirloom tomatoes. Okay. So why don't you explain to those that may not be aware, what is an heirloom tomato? Um, most people are familiar with tomatoes or regular tomatoes that are grown in a store, and those were genetically uh, created to make it easy to transport them. And flavor, taste, and texture are very low on their list of requirements. Heirloom tomatoes are open pollinated tomatoes that have been grown for generations. The seeds can be saved from generation to generation and the quality of the fruit is what makes them people wish to, to uh, save them and to uh, pass them on. And so there are over 400 varieties of heirloom tomatoes from all over the country and the world and they just have more flavor and are much more vigorous and satisfying and you can taste what your grandmother had on her kitchen table and you know that you're eating the right tomato, a real tomato. All right, Billy, so what, can you tell me what, what is the difference between a determinate and an indeterminate tomato? Uh, that's a really neat question, Jeff. Uh, many people hear that uh, label applied to heirloom tomatoes and wonder what it is. A determinate tomato is a short, stocky tomato that grows to a certain height, usually three or four feet, doesn't require much staking, and once the, the uh, vine has reached its natural height, its genetic height, it will set fruit there and then it quits, then it stops. Indeterminate um, tomato plants are long-running vines that can grow to 12 feet, and they will continue to set fruit while you're harvesting fruit and throughout the whole season until frost, uh, set fruit and, and you're able to harvest fruit. So it does require a lot of staking and a lot of attention that is not required with a determinate uh, tomato. But for me, I, I grow nothing but indeterminate. I like the way that they run. I like that people come to my gardens and see a 12 foot long tomato vine with fruit all over it. Okay. All right. So um, why do you grow heirloom tomatoes and why do you go through so much trouble to make sure it, uh, you're using organic methods? Um, I was a back to the land hippie in the late 60s and 70s and just through reading Rachel Carson and, and many other people who were paying attention to what we were doing to our, our environment made me aware and want to do something to uh, thank the environment for giving so much bounty to the world, to our species, and, and to my family and our, my community. And so I investigated what organic methods were and found them to be far superior to chemical uh, and pesticide, herbicide-driven agriculture because those have long residual effects that are detrimental to the soil, the biological uh, growth and, and life in the soil, as well as to beneficial insects like um, honeybees that are our pollinators and essential to production of most crops in the world. And we see a giant uh, decrease in the number of honeybees at this time directly related to the chemicals that are used by non-organic methods. Also, because um, I'm using uh, compost, uh, the compost has nutrients and minerals in it that are transmitted to the tomato plants and to the fruit. And people who grow tomatoes uh, have gotten my tomatoes and eaten them and go, I grow tomatoes, why are yours better than mine? And organic methods across the board for every fruit that I'm aware of, uh, every vegetable will produce more beautiful plants and they also have a natural resistance to um, biological pest and to uh, insect pest. They have a natural resistance that is part of their heritage and so um, they are a great source of um, nutrients and health and vigor and they're beautiful. Okay, so you mentioned the, the pest. That was going to be one of my questions is, okay, so they have a natural resistance. Does that, does that mean that they don't 
get attacked by pests at all? And if they do, what do you do to prevent it? Well, that's another great question. And something that I share with everyone who comes to, to my farm uh, is that the single most important thing that I have in, in my quiver of tools is wood ash. We live in a country where slash and burn agriculture was the predominant way of uh, creating crops, especially when people first were pioneering in, in our area and around the country. They'd come in and they would cut down the trees and burn it and as quickly as possible plant crops so that they'd have something to eat. Uh, this depleted the soil over generations to the point where they continued to move because the soil wouldn't produce crops anymore and they would go and slash and burn next to it. One of the neat things about burning wood from our locality is that it actually concentrates minerals and micronutrients into that ash and when you put it back into the soil and here on the east coast almost all the soil is highly acidic and so it helps to balance the soil so that the roots of the uh, heirloom plants can actually access the minerals and uh, the nutrients that are in the soil. Because when it's too acidic, they literally can't biologically and chemically access them. So wood ash, uh, I put it directly on tomato plants. I put it in the soil around it. I put it on every year and I've never um, over alkalinized my soil. And it's, it's not the only thing that I do. I use diatomaceous earth, I use mulch, um, I, I make sprays from um, marigolds and garlic and a little bit of soap detergent and water. And uh, most of the pests are repelled naturally by healthy plants. That's one of the neat things about it. If the soil is healthy and the plants are healthy, they absolutely have a tremendous natural resistance to biological uh, bacterial uh, pathogens as well as insects. And it's remarkable to see them. I have wasps uh, that I imported and grow as well as ladybugs and uh, uh, praying mantis and I can go out in my garden and because I don't use chemicals that kill those beneficial insects I can see cutworms and other uh, Caterpillars that normally would be decimating my I can see the, the eggs laid by the wasp or the uh, uh, Praying mantis and they just naturally die and it's a it's a cycle that those dead insects actually go back and become fertilizer hmm. Okay, so anybody with a fire pit or even a fireplace, save those ashes and throw them into your garden. It's great for your, your ornamental shrubs as well as for your vegetable garden. The only caveat is, is never use the ash of pressure treated wood. Pressure treated wood has toxic chemicals in it. So if you have a chimney, and you shouldn't burn it anyway because it's not healthy to breathe the, the smoke from it when you're having it. But a lot of people don't know. They think it's wood, it's wood. That, but pressure treated wood is a dangerous chemical composition. It has to be to, to prevent um, insects from eating it. So other than that, yes, uh, any wood that you can get and burn makes phenomenal amendment for your soil and will give you benefits for many, many years to come. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time and for the information. I know it was beneficial to me and I got a fire pit and I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> grab those ashes and throw them in the garden right after we talk. But um, if you want more information uh, about Billy, check out the website at the end of this video. And if you want to continue this conversation online, please feel free to do so by filling out the box below. That's all I have for this week. Until next time. Bye-bye. Keep on growing.